Hello everybody, today we have a continuation of our ultimate Proxmox walkthrough series in which I go over everything that I'm doing to build and set up my home lab, mostly centering and hosted with Proxmox. And just a real quick update since last recording one of these videos, I've added quite a few different services that I'm going to cover in depth in some other dedicated videos. For example, I have a Zigbee server running right here. We have Grafana. I've separated out Overseer and Tatuli for my uh, kind of Plex media server management. And you can see here I added a system to my cluster. But I added this one a little prematurely, one to test it out, play around with it. And because this is what is going to be hosting our Proxmox backup server. The Proxmox backup server is a wonderful piece of software that you can either install within Proxmox itself, you can install it on its own dedicated machine. Hell, if you have a Synology NAS or something like that, you could spin it up as a VM and use a completely different platform to back up your Proxmox containers, virtual machines, storage, things like that. In this box is really a dream come true for me. This is 120 terabytes of good old spinning disk storage. Now, Server Part Deals sent this over to me and they are sponsoring this video, so thank you. <laughs> You've probably seen them around. They are on eBay, fantastic ratings. They have their own site that you can purchase uh, refurbished and recertified hard drives from. It's a pretty good deal considering that the uh, Seagate hard drives that I usually use are right about the $400 mark and these are a lot closer to the $200 mark. So a lot more Terras for the dollars. And the shipping's pretty nice. We have uh, boxes in bubble wrap within a box. <laughs> there they are. Server part deals has a few different options. You could get new drives from them, of course, but in addition, they offer manufacturer certified as well as refurbished products. The uh, recertified ones come directly from the manufacturer and then they sell those directly to you or the refurbished products. They actually get, they pop them open, they test them, they make sure all is well and then they sell them to you. And to be quite frank, I don't know what I have here. They just said they were sending over six drives. And if we open this up, you can see I have three drives here completely surrounded in foam. Again, I'm very impressed with the packaging of these. And here it is. It does look like I am getting a recertified instead of a refurbished product. Specifically, you can see that they are Seagate refurbished 20 terabyte drives. And I mean, these are clean. I can see a little smudging here, but that's about it. It looks like this one came out in 2020. And I think, are these the, oh, they are. <laughs> These are the same drives that uh, LTT purchased from them, so that's cool. They must have a lot of them. <laughs> On their website here, if I go to products, you can see hard drives, condition. Uh, if I go to manufacturer certified, the drives that I got are $239 each. And if we look for the new pricing, we have almost $400. So not too bad, not too bad. Just out of curiosity here, if we go to the seller refurbished they don't have as much to choose from but you can see right here we have an 18 terabyte for 184 we have a 8 terabyte for 90 bucks which is how much i spend on my four terabyte drives so yeah pretty good deal here but what i did i threw in all those 20 terabyte drives into the system so if i go over here and i head over to disks you can see we have some disks one, two, three, four, five, six of those 20 terabyte drives, an absolutely ridiculous amount of storage. But getting started, since I threw in these hard drives here, I do need to spin it up as a ZFS pool. So what we can do, I already went through and wiped the disks, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, let's go over here to ZFS and create a new ZFS here. Naming these is probably the most difficult part of all of this. I'm going to just copy the uh, LTT video. This is Ocean. It is a very large pool. We're going to make sure we add it to the storage. I'm going to go through and select all of these. I also have two, uh, two terabyte NVMe drives that I'm going to be setting up as well. We're going to be setting this up as a RAID Z, which makes it so I can lose one of these drives and I'm going to be fine. Uh, if I was smart, I'd go with RAID Z too, but I'm not. So I'm going to keep it as RAID Z compression lz4 is usually a good bet and uh, i think we're good to go let's so let's hit create give that some time it's a lot of storage but it's all empty so it really should not take too long at all as you can see there it is done so now we have our ocean with 120 terabytes about 100 of them should be usable and if you go back to part one of this series you'll see some of the commands that i used to actually see the available storage z pool 
list, hit enter, and that will show basically exactly what we see in Proxmox. But if we go ahead and type in ZFS list, this will show us the actual available storage and kind of manage this through the terminal if you want to. Do note also, I made a follow-up video. I'm not going to add storage as directories anymore going forward because then that creates those .raw files for everything, including containers, which I don't really want to do. Granted, with uh, virtual machines, it is still going to create those .raw kind of virtual drive files. So now we have our ocean. Real quick here, I'm just going to create a new uh, ZFS. I'm going to call this one Flash which is going to kind of match the other one I have in my Zima cube. What this is going to do is it's going to make it really easy for me to migrate uh, these containers and virtual machines in between the uh, two machines. When you do a migration of like a container, for example, it's going to want a matching kind of a storage name when you do that. When I moved this over, I didn't have that set up. So I had to set up or I had to migrate the storage to local, migrate it machines, and then move the storage out of local. So if you have limited local storage, uh, that could be a problem. So I am going to add this as the same name. This is not a single disk. I'm going to go ahead and mirror this and then select the same stuff here and then click on create. So now that's going to run. Life is good. You can see that create right there and boom, we're rocking and rolling. So now what we're going to want to do is head over to our Proxmox backup server website and, and then go over here to the Proxmox backup server 3.3. We're going to right click this and copy the link because we don't really need to download it to our local machine because Proxmox has this wonderful feature under our local storage ISO images. We can download from a URL, go ahead and drop that on in and query our URL. And once it figures out exactly what it's downloading, we can click on download. So now this is going to download and upload directly into our Proxmox server. So give it just a little bit to do that. And there we go. The task is okay. So if we close this out, we can now see our Proxmox backup server ISO there. And from there under NAS sync or whatever machine that you want to install this on, uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new virtual machine here. Node is going to be on NAS sync. This one, I'm going to give it the ID of let's do 251 because I kind of keep all my um, virtual machines here in the 200s. So this is going to be, um, I'm just going to call this backup, get real creative here. And then from there, let's go next. And for the storage, I'm going to select the ISO image that we just downloaded to so the Proxmox server here. All this looks good. So we can go next. Shouldn't need to do anything here. And next under disks, this is where we're going to do some changes. Now for storage, flash is going to be perfect. This is just where the actual operating system is going to be installed just for a little wiggle room. Let's give it some extra space. And let's add a, another disk. This is where everything as of now is going to be backed up. If you know of a better way to do this, et cetera, et cetera, please let me know down in the comments or anybody who may be watching this video. So here it's going to need a lot of room. I'm going to switch this over to our ocean to uh, back up everything. Now here, I don't need too much. Well, let's see math, probably half of it. Let's do 50,000 gigabytes. So 50 terabytes because that machine holds like 20 terabytes. And if I want to add any other machines, so on and so forth, that should be enough. And I could always change that later. Now format raw disk, it's a virtual machine, so I can't really change that. So let's go next uh, CPU. It's not going to need too much. I'm still going to give it four cores though, just for giggles and then memory. This should be fine, but I like to give things a little more than they actually need. So let's give it four gigs of Ram and let's keep all that the same. And looks like we are good to go. So let's start it after created and then click on finish. And then once that boots up, we should be able to dive into the actual installation of Proxmox backup server, which you can see here booted up impressively quick. So let's go into the graphical setup. And if you've ever installed Proxmox, this is going to look incredibly familiar. So I'm just going to agree to that. Select the disc that I want the operating system to be installed on, which is this one right here, the smaller one. Let's go next United States. Just go ahead and select all the appropriate stuff for you. So Los Angeles, us next, give it a pretty decent password as well as a valid email. And then from there, we're going to set up some of our network stuff here. So we have our host name, uh, uh, proxmox backup server dot land. I am going to change this just to backup dot local. So it matches the, uh, host name that I gave it over here. 
and I am actually going to change the static IP to 251. That's another thing I'm starting to do. I have all these uh, IDs matching with their IP addresses, just an organizational thing. And I'm going to change the DNS server to the same as the gateway. It automatically loaded our PyHole instance, which is cool and all, but I am going to go with it like this. And here we are. So I'm going to click install and we should be good to go. So there we go. We have our IP address there right there. It's basically impossible to see, but it is ending in 8006, one port away from the Proxmox port. So I'm going to go over here and actually navigate to that 251-8007. And let's go ahead and skip this, visit the website. And here we are into Proxmox backup server, username and password and log on in. So this is what Proxmox backup server looks like. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on here. Later, I'm going to add this into my Nginx configuration. So it's just gonna be backup at my local domain, but we're not going to do that right now. But one thing we can do is head over here to the Proxmox community scripts, view scripts. Whenever you install Proxmox, they have a lot of cool tools here. So we have the uh, Proxmox backup server post install, update repositories, uh, VE post install, which I recommend you run. This will do a few things. So you can see right here, correct sources, gets rid of that non-subscription message if you use Proxmox a lot. It's a good thing to subscribe to to support the project. At the test repo, update the server, a bunch of different things. So I'm going to copy this, head back over to our backup server, dive into the shell, and just paste in that command, run it. And we are going to run this post install script. We're going to allow it to change our sources, disable the enterprise repository, um, enable the no subscription repo. For now, I'm going to get rid, no, I'm not going to add the test repo. I don't really want to do that. Let's get rid of the subscription nag. This is the thing where it says you should go ahead and support the software if you uh, see fit. And we're going to update the server now and just let this run. It's going to set up everything for us. And then when it is done, we're going to reboot this server. And this is what I was talking about here. So yes, we are going to go ahead and reboot this server. If we head back over to our uh, Zimacube or our main Proxmox instance, we could see the reboot is complete. So let's just refresh this page. And now since we're all updated, we ran the script, we can set up our actual storage here. So if we go to storage and disks, we can see that large, uh, now 53 terabytes of uh, storage. Right here, if you're doing this on like bare metal, you'll have multiple disks here you'd wanna go through and actually wipe these disks. I don't need to do that because it's a fresh disk we just created. And actually being able to use this, you're either gonna to want to create a directory or a ZFS here. If you have multiple disks, you'd want to create a ZFS. You can create a directory if you want to, but even with this single disk, I'm going to use ZFS because then it supports compression and all that within this, even though the actual like raw uh, virtual hard drive is already within ZFS. I'm, I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, this again, I'm just going to call this backup. This is a single disk compression. I'm going to go LZ4 select the single disk and then click on create going to give that a minute to run and do what it needs to do and there we go so now here we should be able to connect this instance to our kind of main proxmox over here so i'm just going to go under data center and under storage here we are going to add the proxmox backup server so here give it an id um i'm gonna go proxmox backup server pbs the actual server is located right here. And then our username is going to be root at, I think it's Pam and put in our password. I'm going to have it on all nodes. I'm going to enable it. The data store, uh, I just think it's backup. That's what I put. Uh, go back to your backup server here and under dashboard, we're going to want to click on show fingerprint. Give this a copy, forgot to do that and paste it right here under fingerprint. Boop. This just is kind of the key to allow the, the to communicate, uh, to add. And there we go. We have PBS right there, Proxmox backup server, and we should see it connect very soon right there. There we go. Beautiful. So now that that's all set up and connected, I should be able to actually create our backup task here. So if I go over here to backup, click on add, here for node, we are going to select the, let's start with Zimacube just by itself. Cause I don't want to like, I don't know if this is even how it would work, but I don't want 
Proxmox backup server to try to back itself up within its storage. We're going to select Proxmox backup server here. Schedule. I am going to have this um, every Sunday at 1 a.m. sounds nice. That's a good time. Here for the selection mode, you can include all, include selected VMs, exclude or pool based. I am going to do include selected. So as I create them, I could choose whether or not if I want to add those to our backups. And actually for now, I'm going to deselect Windows 10 because I'm going to be moving that over in a minute. And then over here, we have notification options. So you could set that up if you'd like to. For mode here, I am going to want to do snapshots. If we go up here, we have some more stuff. So like retention, you could set like keep hourly, weekly, all those settings. I'm going to go through and learn how to use that properly. Probably set it's like two weeks or so. We have a uh, note templates and some things under advanced that you could go through and edit and play around with if you'd like to, but I'm just going to go ahead and click on create. So now we can see the backup is now enabled every day or not every day, every Sunday at 1 AM and we're good to go. If I click on this here, I can click on run now and I'm going to run the job and it should start backing up just about everything. But you can see there, little save icon, it's a uh, config locked. It's currently backing that up and it's gonna go through everything. All right, it's a couple days later, apparently backing up about 12 terabytes of data over a gigabit network it takes a long time. So real quick, I'm gonna show you what I did. First, uh, back to the retention thing, it's much simpler. It's keep last how many backups. So if I'm doing this weekly, I keep the last four snapshots or whatever, it's going to have a month worth of recoverable stuff and you can play with that and edit that as you see fit now. When I initially ran through and did the backups, it did everything a little too quick, and that's because it didn't back up absolutely everything. For example, Vault here owns two disks. One is that Docker, and one is the data, which has a whole bunch of stuff on it. What I forgot to do initially is we're gonna to want to click on this, go to edit, and then check backup. And now when you go ahead and back this up, it's actually going to back up that entire directory to Procmox backup server. Initially, it didn't do that. It had the directory, but it was just blank. And you can kind of see that real quick. If I go right here to backup and then I switch this to uh, PBS, you could see the backups that I ran in the size. See, the first one was only 1.6 gigabytes and then this one is 17 terabytes. If I click on this and then go to like file restore, for example, we can actually see the whole directory of the system. And then right here under data, we can actually see everything that is on here. But if I go to like this first one, for example, go file restore data here, doesn't have anything in it. So you want to go through and actually check the extra mount points that you want backed up specifically. And for example, I have these same mount points backed up into servar, but to avoid unnecessary duplication, if I go over here, you could see I do not have backups selected on these ones because they're the same thing and I could just restore it from 100 if need be. So that is Proxmox backup server. If I go over here under data store, you could see I'm using 25% uh, of the 53-ish terabytes that I set up. And you can see the day I backed it all up took about, let's see, when I started late on the 20th all the way to the 22nd. And of course, this is just kind of a base level video. I got everything set up and working to the point where if something catastrophic happens on one of my machines, I should be okay when it comes to data. Or if I accidentally delete a container, I can restore it. Life is good. Proxmox backup server does a whole lot more that I haven't dived into, including being able to back up things from other systems. We can set up remote file system backups, bunch of cool stuff. And as I learn and experiment with it, I may bring more content to you. So with that, do make sure you subscribe down below. I'm going to link to a playlist. This is now going to be the fourth video in the playlist of my uh, Proxmox full server guide walkthrough. I do recommend you check out some of the other ones. And with all that, again, big thank you to serverpartdeals.com for sending over these drives. If you want to save some money on some drives, uh, go ahead and try them out. They do have a warranty, so if you get a bad disk from the get-go, they will go ahead and replace that for you. I'll leave a link down below to their full refund policy as well as a link, uh, affiliate link. So if you go ahead and use that, you'll get $5 taken off your order. And with all that, I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.